In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. First, let me extend a word of welcome to any of our visitors. If you're here in town visiting family or ready for the hunting season that's been opening today and through the next few days, it's good to have you pray with us and begin this sacred season of Advent. So to prepare ourselves now, let us acknowledge our sin and seek the mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful people, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Of Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe, and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord of our justice, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your path. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. You, O Lord, have lived my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. You, O Lord, have lived my soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy. Toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him, and his covenant for their instruction. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love. For one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us, 
how you should conduct yourselves to please God. And as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. simple question in religious education classes like would you name the holy days of obligation can be quite an interesting experience for both the teacher as well as for the students because they always seem to come up with a couple new ones. Uh, Ash Wednesday is always on there even though it is not a holy day of obligation and we know it gets one of the largest crowds of the year. Occasionally, Thanksgiving Day is on that list. And I always tell them, when I'm the one asking the questions, that I vote for that. Because just having celebrated the day a few hours ago, really, you and I know that despite some of the Christmas anticipation that can kind of filter in early in, in Thanksgiving, that basically it still is a day that involves a meal and involves people making, particularly in some instances, heroic efforts just to be together. The extended family gathering to give thanks, to pause and to give thanks. 
And in some ways, we almost don't want that day to end. We kind of milk it for all it's worth because it's a rather unusual holiday. And we know that come early Friday morning, the very day after Thanksgiving, that it's like, get ready, get set, go. And the race is on through December the 25th. So when we come in these opening moments of another Advent season that you and I are so familiar with, we know that we almost have to make a very deliberate effort, not to in any way deny that Christmas is coming and that there's a lot of cultural traditions and family traditions for us to enjoy. But as men and women of faith, to be mindful of two angles that come out in the Word of God this evening to help us appreciate who and what we're getting ready to celebrate. They both begin with the letter A. The first one is anticipation. And you and I know, if we're around kids at all, that that level is in high gear even before Thanksgiving. And the closer we get to Christmas, the idea of anticipating this day that is so unlike any other day, no matter how old or young we are, that it never loses its flavor or spirit for us, bringing back so many memories of when we were growing up as kids, that there is meant for us as faith, people of faith, to anticipate in what way could God possibly touch our lives again this Advent and this Christmas, that we're open to the possibility, anticipating that yet we haven't exhausted it, no matter how many Advents we've been through, or how many Christmases that we've prepared for, that there still is in our faith that hope that we can grow in anticipation, not just waiting to the 25th, but day by day in this wonderful season that we call Advent. And at the same time, there's the other day, and that's anxiety. Anticipation and anxiety. The anxiety part is very much the human dimension of it all. That somehow we see our to-do list never getting shorter but only longer. And some of the frustration in not only buying gifts but again the expectations that others can have of us and Christmas as well as expectations that we put on ourselves or others. So tonight, Jesus, along with St. Paul, addresses both the anticipation and the anxiety. In the Gospel, Jesus says it so well. Simply says, be aware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. He says, stand erect, get up, get moving. Your redemption is near at hand. He combines them both. Get rid of the anxiety and anticipate what's happening because our redemption is near at hand. We need to be reminded that we are saved people as we turn to the person of Jesus and herald again in his birth. And the same with St. Paul. If you have a chance to simply look that reading up in your own Bibles or take the Missal at home with you for this week and make that, prayer, that reading your daily prayer, it's a beautiful and sincere part of Paul wishing for us what, first of all, that we keep growing in love, that it will increase in us, now, isn't that a grace of anticipation? In light of all of the failings that we might be aware of, the distance that's more than just social distancing during these extended days of the, the virus, that our love may increase. And notice kind of the way he gives us a pat on the back. He says, keep doing what you're doing. But typical Paul, he says, and need to do more. And you might say, so what else? 
What else do I need to do to do even more? That's anticipation versus anxiety. Opportunity versus simply getting drowsy and marking off the days on the calendar. Anticipate and lay aside the anxieties. What a different four weeks this could be if we could take these opening gifts of God's Word and allow them to develop, to come to birth in each of us. In making communion calls this week in the nursing homes, and they always, these people of God, always have lessons to teach us. But there was a lady that wasn't from the parish, and she was blind, so I had to introduce who I was, and I simply asked her, would you like to receive communion? And she said, I'd love it. Would you like to receive Holy Communion? I'd love it. Anticipation. Rather than anxiety. So we already have started the anticipation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Come, Lord Jesus. I'd love it. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we are assured of the gift of God's grace, let us seek His powerful help in the face of our needs and those of our world family. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may visit his holy church and keep watch over us always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may guide the minds and wills of those who govern us to promote the common good according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may free those facing the threat of persecution for their faithful witness to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may banish disease, drive out hunger, and ward off every affliction. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That 
Christ, the divine physician, may bring healing, comfort, and hope to all the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may protect the many holiday travelers in their return trips home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the good shepherd, may welcome into paradise our brothers and sisters who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ be attentive to the prayers in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Let your blessing be upon this wreath and upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord is our sacrifice and the praise of the Lord is the name. Accept, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and he so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise 
in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
Jesus in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to each other the sign. Our communion hymn is where charity and love prevail.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us for even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I presume that you did see the Jesse tree, which uh, has a number of tags still on it, so if you're able to take one or two of them and do your shopping, uh, have them back in a couple of weeks, uh, you know that this certainly makes Christmas for many of the uh, households and the sisters in Frenchville and that Clearfield County uh, visit over the course of Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. During the days of early afternoon darkness, let us sing hymn number 506, O Lord of Light. Mm -hmm. 